This is Patito's gang, and we're pleased to have you on this ride. Um, this is a ride that takes us back some, a walk through memory lane, and a look going forward. Uh, this season, as we have said, from episode to episode, we're going to have a special on 20 years of Patito's gang. And we begin these episodes by particularly paying tribute to some members of the gang, especially those of them that have gone to the gang land in heaven. Um, four of the early gang members, as we have stated before, have uh, passed on. Uh, they include Dr. Nukaba Adinoyojo, Chief Pini J. Sinoye Badwe, uh, Malam Amadu Abubakar, and of course, Mrs. Remy Oyo. Uh, today, in a special tribute to Remy Oyo, we reflect on the gender agenda in the 20 years, during these 20 years of Patito's gang, but particularly in the light of current goings on in our country, uh, in discussions of, of rape. Now, since the, is it the Me Too movement in the United States, uh, women have been willing to take some of the risks they didn't take in the past to say, look, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, I was taken advantage of, I was abused, and I, I couldn't go public with it. But people should not continue to get away with these things. So I'm coming forward to say this went wrong, and somebody should be held accountable. Um, clearly, we have a culture that has not been fair to women, let us be very honest. And that's one of the things that Patito Gang has tried to do through the years, to focus on some of those issues. And my own usual call on that matter, whenever we've discussed such issues, is that a society that chooses to deploy the talents and assets of just a fraction of its population suboptimizes and will not be able to compete with a society that treats with dignity half, sometimes more than half of its population and uses their talents to help advance uh, the cause of nation building. So um, we've got a balanced gang. That is one accomplishment of this particular conversation because it, it's a struggle. Many times we don't have uh, a balanced gang. We have more men than women. Although I've had the privilege of uh, uh, being on this seat on at least a couple of occasions when everybody else was female. So uh, I think that was a good opportunity. But what have been the critical issues for women in these last 20 years that we have been in conversation about? Well, I deliberately kept quiet for the women <laughs> to <laughs> set <laughs> agenda. <laughs> as we normally do, build the bridge and wait and for them to cross. cross yeah. Because <laughs> when we started Patito's Gang, <laughs> to drag some of them out. But we are grateful to people like uh, Remy Oye, uh, 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 this lady, uh, Fidelia Chiwokia. So the agenda is very straight. Every man should attempt to see women as the mother, the sister, the, bro uh, the daughter. I wouldn't want anyone to look down and treat my daughter underrate her because she's a woman. I won't take that. I won't want anyone to insult my wife because she's a woman. So as we expect our wives, our daughters, our mothers to be treated, I think it's a national agenda uh, that's qualified. And in fact, if there's any problem we're having now, the women or the girls tend to be performing more than the men. I remember when we were anxious in those days, everybody wanted Loyola, my daughter did it in her stride. The men were struggling. And I think the problem could be, but in the future, the, the, the equation will be reversed. Men will be struggling actually, to actually maintain it. The, there are some 
parts of Nigeria where they have a real problem. Yes. Uh, many years ago, Anambra State uh, had a as commissioner for uh, education, Professor Peter Ejiofor, and he ended up writing a book about declining male enrollment in schools. They had a governor at the time, uh, Ekomado Samson Emeka or Mero, and I'd gone to visit him, and, uh, and he said, look, uh, and I said to him, no, 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 I've just been to my alma mater, the University of Nigeria, and I'm in complete shock. The whole campus has taken over by female hostels. Can you imagine desecration? A woman is sleeping in the room that I used to live in. Eh? <laughs> and uh, the governor said to me, God do that, my friend. <laughs> so that is in our enlightened <laughs> self-interest yes. to put the agenda of parity. Of parity. Because, because that's before the <laughs> So, but, but you know, the, the real interesting part of the story from uh, Ekmodo Mero was that he said he went to a school. He was within schools as he was appointed governor. When he got there, he was wondering why are there all girls' schools all over the place. So he one class, he saw three boys. So he said to you, what are you boys doing in the girls' school? <laughs> so one of the boys said, it's not a girls' school. It's, it's a mixed school. He said, how come there are only three of you? He said uh, that his friends refused to go to school, that they said that the ones who have gone to school, before they will finish university, they would have become a limited liability company. So. Yeah, um, so for me, I think that the problem really is from our culture. So um, it's good to have people like you and Prof who have this thinking, but unfortunately you're in the minority because um, a lot of men in our society believe that women should be second place. Take for example, one of the biggest problems we have as women is just even going to the market. Just going into the market to shop for your family or for whatever you need. You find that men are pursuing you, going around, touching you, saying, my customer, come this way. And then even when you try to complain, you find that it is still women, fellow women that are in the market who are saying to you, you are a woman, so why shouldn't, be, why, why shouldn't you be touched? I admire. <laughs> you know, you are a woman, you should be touched. So I think that's part of what's one of the problems. I think what we need is a lot of education. Um, in the last 20 years, looking at Patti Toscan, I knew Remy very well. She was one of those who mentored us when we were quite young, being in, in journalism. When we got out of school, we saw her as she was then, she was already an editor when we just got out of school and got into um, journalism. So things have not really changed in the last 20 years. We still have women being, you know, Trampled on. We still have women who don't, they don't have rights. We don't have women at the highest in, in politics. I mean, if you look at the Senate, how many women do we have and how much do they stand up for the rights of women or even the rights of Nigerians? Um, you know, if you look at uh, education, how are we educating our girls? How are we educating women? But I can't if imagine any middle class person who does not do the same for his girl child as he does as for his male well, child. Like, like she said, mm -hmm. we still have a lot of education. We have men who still think that young girls, even at that middle class level, will not have the right like the male child. I've had occasions like that where I'd see they'd rather have their male children go all the way and then the female child, by the time they're 18, Start looking for a husband, start getting married. I've had such examples, even with the middle class. So that's why I said we need a lot of education. I was in a panel, in fact, I was uh, uh, the only man on that panel. Was, uh, as usual. Uh, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> At the IOD, the IOD uh, uh, um, conference on women directors. And, and, I, and I said it very matter of factly, I didn't even realize I said it until people began to express uh, uh, joy about it. I said, is it not the same amount of money I spent paying school fees for the boy as I was spending for the girl? Why should the girl have less of an opportunity to go ahead and the boy? Uh, Unfortunately, people that think like you are in the minority. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't th it's, it, it, you have to introspect a little bit. Yeah. Because sometimes women take it for granted that they won't be hard so they don't talk. I'll tell you, for example, you mentioned politics. Yeah. Women, perhaps, are the worst enemies for women candidates. Wow. No, I can tell you that. Because there is this kind of, I won't say rivalry, you know, uh, who is she? She wants to go there, and that kind of thing. And 
you have to be prepared. What some of us won't allow, I'm a proponent for gender equality, but I won't also want gender opportunism. Most times in Nigeria, you can notice traces of gender opportunism, which is not very good because in the end, it wouldn't produce any results. Give everybody a level playing field. Go to ministries now. Who are the state councils? Go to the judiciary. Most of the judges are women. So we are even, <laughs> we are even endangered if we don't redress this so that they know that some men could mean well. So when it comes to their own, they will be sympathetic. But women should also attempt to educate the younger ones. And it's, excuse me, like uh, my wife is her passion talking to women, to the girls. If you see the kind of effect it has had, my daughter will send her out to go and talk to these younger girls. Of course, when she finished and there was a battle because I wanted her to move over for her PhD straight away. The mom said, oh, no, no, let her come back and do her youth service. So for men, for me and for Pat, you can rise as far as you can go. But are there enabling environments? For instance, what time are these, most of these um, political meetings held? What time of the day? I mean, Susan can speak more to that. Well, well, uh, but the, the, the problem with Nigerian <laughs> politics yeah. is that... Uh, it doesn't encourage the, the, women to participate. It doesn't long encourage thinking people to participate, not just <laughs> <the> women. <laughs> Nigerian politics is a bunch of crooks getting together at 2 a.m., that's the main thing. Let's be honest to ourselves. Uh, serious politics should happen, organized during the day when you can have a proper conversation. A, a group hitching together at 1 a.m. to think of how to cheat their neighbor. That's not politics, as far as I'm concerned. You know? So there's a fundamental problem, but it's not about women. We still need to deal with the issues of women, gender, and the challenge. Let's pause. Go out to... Uh, the people out there and let them make their inputs and then we'll return and engage on the gender agenda going forward. When the government is saying that way, it will be reduced the number of people that are just striving to get there. Yeah. What I can say about that is that, you know, if we, women, they have something to donate to, to our societies. Some of those women that are involved in um, politics, they are not participating well because of their thinking. If you look at it in another side, they are like salt in the steel. Without them, this thing, the steel is, can, can't be sweet. Behind any successful man, there must be a woman. That's why we can't do without them. They have their own role to play in any leadership and, the politi and politics. Education is the premise of progress in every society. Over the years, we've seen our educational system weaken from what it was to what we see now. We are faced with a situation where our institutions release graduates with little or no employability skills. I advocate that employability and vocational training centers should be established in institutions. This will expose students to the realities of the corporate world and the business world. A possible solution would be for Nigerian education to be tailored to the evolving needs of the world. This would require a curriculum that both emphasizes technical skills as well as communication skills, problem solving, and then project management. This would necessarily result into young Nigerians who have the tools and skills to solve Nigeria's problem, as well as innovate and create the future Nigeria that we all desire. It will also be important for educators and trainers to realize that students are co-learners in a knowledge-sharing environment, meaning that they are not tabula rasa who come empty to be spoon-fed, but they are people who should be spurred into thinking of solutions to problems for themselves. This year, the UN International Youth Day is focused on transforming education. The Center for Values and Leadership, CVL, would like to invite you for our International Youth Day Conference scheduled for Thursday, August 15th, 2019 at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you there. And we are back. This is Patito's Gang. 
Now, quite frankly, the question of an age in which women will dominate in terms of their numbers in certain kinds of occupations, it's already here with us. In places like Anambra State, where men choose not to go to school because they wanted to make money for a long time, they're going to get to a point where all the judges literally will be women. Uh, the permanent secretaries will be women. And that's something else that our society has not prepared itself to deal with because the men have these incredible egos and all the educated people who can take those positions will be men and the men will begin to wonder why and how. That creates a new social issue. But uh, beyond these kinds of problems, which hopefully uh, that, that culture will address, there are still fundamental issues about women's participation in public life, in enterprise, and all of that. How do we begin to break the glass ceilings? We need to see more women CEOs. We need to see, uh, uh, because a representative bureaucracy is important because you, you reflect the perspective of that group. So what are the barriers or what are the, what are the hindrances from uh, getting this to happen? Uh, besides the fact that some men are trying to take advantage of the women on their way up. It's the general, you know, situation of absence of transparency and accountability. Where? You in see, the corporate world or in the public? Corporate in the Nigerian public, society. Okay. So when there is no fresh air, people do all sorts of rubbish. So that the kind of barriers placed before women in order to give them the opportunity will be unconscionable, right? But if everything were to be transparent and the rules known beforehand, right? Not the rules get changed as you approach. Propose, you do get. So women would be exposed to more. But I'm still insisting that we are arguing in our enlightened self-interest yes, because I see women taking over. It's in the best. Oh, well, I, 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 I'm, it's not even that. It, for me, for me, the critical thing is that every part of society, every member have an opportunity to pull their weight because all of society profits when everybody pulls their that, That's really what the, 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 the core argument is. But, but there have been laws or norms or social practices that have been inimical of women having their full dignity. One of the biggest problems, we're talking about a lot of issues of rape and all of that in Nigeria today. A lot of it is a power issue. The pastor, the politician, the, the boss, the father. the father, and all of those things are using their power to make women do what they would not ordinarily want to do. How does society tackle this kind of challenge? Because we need to be frontal to the wounds that people carry for years because of such assaults on their dignity, we sometimes underestimate. I really believe in educating the mind, educating yourself, educating society, that certain things, certain norms are, I mean, abominations. You know, I was arguing with her, I was like, why would you wait for 20 years before you say things out? I remember the case in the US too, the judge and the, the professor. I mean, you waited for almost 16, 20 years. But by the time she explained that these things, this violent crime have stigma or they stay in the, yeah, in the woman's mind for a long time, she needed some kind, they need some kind of healing. Yeah. I begin to understand why young girls will be violated and they will, you know, get into their shell yeah, and not talk them. about it. Questions like this, why did you wait this long? Why are you just speaking now? A victim can decide that they want to come out 30 days, I mean 30 years later. It doesn't matter how long they waited. So a good example is um, um, Senator Remy Tinubu, who is on the disciplinary panel for Senator Abo, who allegedly assaulted a woman. And because she was trying to tell him to conduct himself in a proper manner, I mean, Twitter went crazy with people saying she's a woman. How dare she speak to him like that? What? Does she not realize that he's a man and he's a senator and he's a colleague of hers? And people are saying, look, you have left the issue that you're discussing. And then you're talking about a woman. 
This is a man, obviously, who needed discipline. I mean, he wasn't listening to them. He wasn't even obeying the rules of the house. So the, the, the problem is the way the society views women. For me, that's what the problem is. Because if you're going to ask people annoying questions like, why did you wait this long to come out? Your story does not add up. This person was a victim, had that pain, had, has had to live with it for years. Even I'm sure her marriage was suffering. I'm sure that's what led to her, maybe selling her husband and then coming out and all whatnot. So um, it's the way the society views, views women. And I, I feel that women should be educated, not just society at large, but women as well, because there are women who also feel, because of um, our culture, they feel that men are supreme. They've been told that all their lives. So they will say to you, they will say to you you're a woman, you can be touched. You, you don't speak to your husband that way. When, people, when someone says that they've been assaulted, the next question people ask is, what did she do? There is no reason. You don't have to have any reason. I think, How do we I, get I, I think you, to you've, frozen, you've frozen time. <laughs> we are moving. 15 years ago, these things wouldn't have occurred. They would have come out in the open. Yes, but now it's coming up. I mean, in the next five years, in this world of our ICT, uh, social, media. Uh, social media, you see that that uh, incidents could be on the, it, it could be reducing. So, no, no. But some of the practices too, with urbanization and enlightenment, it's like when I die and you ask my wife to be subjected to certain things, she won't do it. Yeah, a critical part of this is power. Uh, power, you know, when you know some people will say, ah, why did she do that? Why did she do this? There's a way that power can completely overwhelm and overwhelm another person mm -hmm. that the person just, it's I mean, it, assuming this, is, this person's promotion is dependent on this thing, there's nobody else who is earning an income in her family, yes. and you use that power. And even though it's the worst thing that she can want to do, and she thinks of all the other things, and she yields. So there must be a protection in our system to prevent people's power. You think of a, I mean, Henry Kissinger once said that uh, power is the ultimate aphrodisiac, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so you can imagine a powerful man like a, a, a US Secretary of State, his power overwhelming women. Then you can think of a pastor who many people in our culture today have come to see as the next thing to God Love. when he says something and you know, the same thing uh, in many other circumstances. That what are the things we can do? For me, the first starting point is education. Yeah. Is to educate everybody, women. to women, children, uh, and a culture of whistleblowing. If anything like this is happening to you, this is what you do immediately, and that kind of thing. And then people know that there can be consequence. Yes. Is that knowing that there can be consequence that will lead to some retreat? In, in, in behavior, yeah. you know. So, what other issues trouble women today besides rape, which is a major one? And when we talk about suicides, a lot of women are very suicide prone, given the many pressures that our culture domestic brings violence. on women. Domestic violence. You've yeah, forgotten our friend who committed suicide after she was raped yeah. in Abuja. Mm, yeah. 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 Mm. So, um, yeah. But, you it's know, down to society, not the understanding. Yeah, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of stresses in society. Uh, 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 the, the wife in the Nigerian culture is one of the most powerful people in my mind. She runs a major enterprise called the home. She goes to work to fend, and she deals with so many other pressures. And these kinds of pressures can push people to the tip of compromising their mental health. Uh, uh, state. Okay. And this, this can uh, uh, tip over very easily if we don't learn to manage it. But somebody gave me a statistic that frightened me some, a couple of years ago that um, the psychiatric home in Yaba, some of the dominant people who come for attention are professional women who are dealing with these kinds of uh, issues. So we must show some empathy for this part of our population that is facing these challenges. But anyhow, these are many of the issues we'll have to keep dealing with. So the memory 
of Remyoyo. Keep watching. We'll have a second part of this conversation. And you can continue with us on that. But in the meanwhile, follow us on our social media handles. And I'm sure we'll get some value out of it all. This is Petito's Gang. And we'll see you next time.